the next book review I have is the scandalous one, the <laughs> the one that caused so much uproar quite a few years ago. It's um, The Closing of the American Mind by Alan Bloom. And it actually has a subtitle that is not on the front. Um, let me see if I can find it because... How Higher Education Has Failed Democracy and Impoverished the Souls of Today's Students. So, um, obviously not a book that's coming to you without a strong opinions of its own. Um, unless you were attending a university when this book was published, uh, or have a special interest in the ongoing dialogue that we call the culture wars, the closing of the American mind may not have been on your radar, may still not be on your radar. Uh, it, when it first came out in 1987, it caused uh, quite a fracas and became, I'm sure, to everyone's imagination, including uh, Alan Bloom's, uh, uh, to, 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 to quite the surprise. I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure he was not expecting his, his book, um, this little, you know, um, sort of un, unprepossessing University of Chicago professor um, to written this national bestseller. Um, after all, it is about, you know, <laughs> the sort of debilitating effects of Heidegger and Nietzsche on higher education. <laughs> and it's, it's sort of interesting thinking about a book like that becoming a bestseller today. This may only serve to bolster Bloom's case that the liberal attitude of openness has gone a few steps too far. Or it might be the direct effect of Bloom's voice. Uh, which is, despite what any of his intellectual confreres say, by turns elitist, rankly unegalitarian, and possibly anti-democratic in content. In tone, he often comes off as the curmudgeonly old grandfather, shaking his newspaper at you and telling you to get off of his lawn. I personally have no problem with the elitism or the, the anti-democratic attitudes when it comes to teaching. There are, quite simply, some books that are better than others. Um, and some ideas that are better than others. And having to pretend otherwise is simply to play the ostrich's game of sticking our heads in the sand. Uh, the better books should be taught for the moral education of students. Uh, while inferior books should be set aside, uh, surely to be picked up by many people who, after graduating from university and having been introduced to the greats, will choose to read a pulp instead. I, like Alan Bloom, uh, regret that recent American culture has lost the sense of education as a kind of moral training. Uh, Bloom's critics, however, also do him the grave disservice of hitching his tone onto the wagon that is the content of his argument. Uh, who's going to take this cranky old man seriously, who sees an uncontrollable sexual release in a young teenage boy ashamedly, unashamedly gyrating his hips to rock and roll, or who unabashedly and unashamedly blames affirmative action as one of the contributing factors in the decadence of the contemporary American university, and whose explanation of the breakdown of the American family, if there is indeed such a thing, is quite charitably described as old-fashioned. Bloom's argument is really large and multifaceted, and I don't think a review of the size that I usually do, um, 8 to 10, maybe 12 minutes on YouTube, um, 600 to 1,000 words written, um, could ever really deal with his argument in all of its complexity. But what it claims at its base is that certain attitudes popular in the 60s and 70s, um, attitudes like universal acceptance, um, this sort of idea of cultural liberalism and all of the baggage that comes with that, universal tolerance, the slow erosion 
of um, what he calls critical faculties, um, which eventually came to shape the minds of uh, these things eventually came to shape the minds of university students and even how universities are uh, administered and run. Uh, he claims after Nietzsche that we live in a time that is beyond good and evil, and, and furthermore that this reflects again on the university. Um, and what he means by good and evil is kind of what Nietzsche meant. That is, that we've ceased not only looking for the differences in good versus bad, he sort of archly points out that we describe nothing as evil anymore, but that we don't even know how to discern the difference between good and bad, or between good and evil. Uh, for, for Ellen Bloom, the moral education must consist of, quote, uh, a vision of the moral universe, reward for good, punishment for evil, and the drama of moral choices. That is, uh, end quote, that is at the very least an education in critical moral discernment, and he argues that this is all but gone. He claims, dubiously, I think, that he noticed a steep drop in the number of students who were interested in the great books, uh, capital G, capital B, from the time when he started teaching in the United States in the early 60s to the time of writing this book, again in 1987. At many stages in his argument, Bloom seems to have counterfactually reimagined a world in which students walked into a university already well-versed in Plato and Homer and Stendhal and, and Hegel and Aristotle, and they were eager, eager to be filled to the brim with the wisdom of their masters, their professors. I think everyone um, was exposed to Homer in high school, oh. but how many of us took it seriously? I mean, <laughs> what what Alan Bloom would call seriously. Um, how many of our teachers were really well-versed in Homer uh, enough to give us a serious exposure to what he was talking about. How many, how many of us walked away from Homer in high school knowing what Xenia was or what the Oikos was? And no, you don't get translations of those words because, you know, you should know the Greek, right? I mean, this, this is a very... <laughs> um, I mean, Alan Bloom is one of the people who, in the 60s, uh, wanted to, uh, voted to not get rid of requiring Greek and Latin at the University of Chicago. So if it was up to him, you know, possibly, it would, it would still be possible for him to be alive today. He died 20 years ago. Um, uh, that, that people would still be taking Greek and Latin to get a four-year degree, which kind of sounds funny, but I kind of wish that people would do it, too. It, it would teach people a lot about their own language. Anyway, um, Richard Hefner, there's a wonderful um, hour-long interview by Richard Hefner on YouTube um, interviewing... Uh, Alan Bloom. It's in 10 minute blocks, six 10 minute blocks, or maybe three 10 minute blocks. Um, Richard Hefner, who is one of uh, Alan Bloom's interlocutors, uh, interlocutors following the popular press cavalcade um, after the book, the release of the book, suggested during his interview with the professor that being an elitist might mean thinking some questions are better answered by Hegel than by Joyce Brothers. And I think by that measure, um, I would imagine the vast majority of intelligent people are, in fact, elitists. Um, knowledge proper, pop, properly used and appropriately fostered uh, quite simply makes you a better person, I think. Um, uh, I know that's why I read. It's 
largely a, an exercise in self-betterment. Um, I have to say it is, it is probably more of an exercise in self-betterment for me than it is in enjoyment and entertainment. I, I read to, to learn because I know, um, knowing more makes you, it makes you a better person. It makes you a more well-rounded person. And that's probably why I read more than anything else. Uh, I think even the most obnoxious uh, paladins of popular culture would admit that there is, you know, uh, intellectual territory that, you know, maybe Oprah's book club hasn't yet broached. And, and that's really what Alan Bloom is saying here, and he got pummeled for it when he said it. Um, you may vehemently disagree with much of what Alan Bloom says, uh, or at least how he says it, which would put you in very good company. Um, but this comes highly suggested for anyone who thinks that answers to life's highest and deepest questions deserve our most serious consideration. It, it serves as an honest refutation against the idea uh, of, a, of a few easy shibboleths of our time, namely that all answers are equally good, that all educations are equally fulfilling and worthy, and that all truths are equally valid. Alan Bloom's The Closing of the American Mind Let the comments flow.